Hi, this is Bill for SparkyChannel.com. Some people have a bath fan where when they turn it on, both the light and the fan go on simultaneously. See, I have the feathers here that are blowing. The air comes in through the grate here and it blows out here. And it eventually will go out through the roof in your bath fan system. So in this case, we got one switch and both the light and the fan go on simultaneously. So I'm going to show you how you can put your fan and your light on separate switches. We're going to use a double switch like this and we'll have uh, the fan on one and the light on the other. And this time I'm going to show you the easy way to do this. You're going to need a little luck. When you open up this box, you're going to need a certain kind of wiring that is there a certain percentage of the time. So it may be an easy fix to put your light and your fan on separate switches. Before you start, always turn the electricity off. This is a fluke voltage detector and you can see it is showing that there is a live electricity in this cable right here. When I turn off the switch wire, see this, this is the wire that's going to the fan and the light. So when it's off, you won't get any reading. When it's on, you do get a reading but that is showing us that our voltage detector is working. You always have to test out your voltage detector before you use it. Now we're going to turn the circuit breaker off. Okay, the circuit breaker is off and we see that the electricity is now off. There's no electricity uh, coming into the circuit. The, this is the wire that comes into the circuit bringing the power in to the box and the electricity is off. The circuit breaker is off and we've tested with the fluke voltage detector to make sure that the electricity is off. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look in this box here at the wires and see what kind of wires are going from the box to the uh, light and fan combination. Remove the screwless wall plate. Okay, so we're going to take the switch out. So here we have the switch pulled out. You see this is a standard single pull switch. You know that because you have two bronze terminals. In this case there's one on this one on either side and one ground wire. So it's a standard single pull switch and I'm going to take it off and then we're going to examine the wiring and see if we can't wire this so that the light and the fan will be on separate switches. Okay, let's pull everything out here, see what we have. Back in the back of the box here, we see we have the grounds all hooked together. And we have one ground coming out for the switch. So that's, that's proper. We have the neutrals hooked together. That's, that's proper. You see, on most switches, there is no place for the neutrals. So you just hook them together and put them in the back of the box. This is the cable that brings power into the system. You see you have a black wire, a white wire, and back here you can see there's a bare ground wire. So that's your power coming into the system. It's called a 12-2 with ground cable. Leaving the system and going to the light fan combination, you have a cable with two hot wires. You got a black and a red and a white neutral wire along with a bare copper wire. And these are connected together with a woggle lever nut and this went to your switch. This tells us that there is a, that this cable right here is a 12-3 with ground cable. So we have one hot wire for the light and one hot wire for the fan. But you see, these are connected together. This is something that I find frequently in light switches. You, by the way, you find this switch, of course, right by your door as you come into a bathroom. And the light, of course, is in the ceiling. I just have it set up this way so that I can demonstrate this. You have a sufficient number of wires to run the light and the fan on separate switches. 
So I'm going to take this off. Okay, so that's the Wago lever nut. It just came right off. And I don't need this jumper now. So we have two separate hot wires. And we've got the neutrals together. And the grounds are together. And this is your your hot wire that comes into the box. I've leaned the fan forward somewhat so you can see uh, the hookups in the fan. The electrical hookups go in this little provided box right here. And this comes up like this and you can see the connections. We have all the neutrals hooked together right here. We have the ground wire going to this green grounding terminal on the body of the light fan combination. We have the red wire going to the blue light wire and we have the black wire from the switch box going to the black fan wire so all our hookups are fine here this there's there's no problem in here we got we got the neutrals hooked together we got the red wire to the light we got the black wire to the fan this red wire is this red wire so this wire goes to the light the blue is always for the light the black wire goes to the fan it's a good idea to check for continuity uh, one way you can do it is to use a meter and put it on continuity right there and I'm going to put one lead on the red wire and we're going to check for continuity with this red wire right here and since I have a Wago lever nut, it, it provides you with a space right here so you don't even have to take them apart. And you see, it is continuous. This, this wire is this wire. And we can take and put this on the black wire. And we can test right here. And so this is continuous. So we do indeed find that this is the fan wire and this is the light wire so now i'm going to go ahead and put these wires back in the provided box i have put woggle lever nuts on the wires for safety and with the circuit breaker turned on temporarily you can test with your voltage detector the various different wires and here you see this is indeed the hot wire coming into the box. So this, this is your fan, this is your light, and this is your hot. Here's an additional test you can do to analyze your wires in your switch box. We have uh, one lead going to the woggle lever nut of the hot wire and one lead going to the neutral. And we have 120.4 volts AC. So we have a, a proper um, hot cable coming into the switch box. Now I have turned the circuit breaker off and we're going to retest to make sure everything's off. Okay, so I turned the circuit breaker off again and I retested. So now we can just take these, these off. So this is our double switch. And the first thing we do is hook up the ground wire. It goes around the terminal in a clockwise manner. You crimp it and tighten it down securely. So there's your ground wire. Now the neutrals aren't going to be used. So we're going to put the neutrals back into the back of the box. On a double switch, we have two black screws, which are for the common wire which is the hot wire. We only have one hot wire, but it will make hot both switches on the double switch. So it doesn't matter which one you hook it to, this one or this one, it'll, it'll work either way. On the other side, we have two bronze terminals and we will be putting the red wire to one and the black wire to the other. And we're gonna be putting it this way. So I'm going to put the light on the top and the fan on the bottom. So the red wire will go to this bronze terminal and the black wire will go to this bronze terminal. Now we'll put the common black wire around the black terminal in a clockwise manner, crimp it and tighten it down securely. So now we'll have, this is the top, so now we're gonna put the light wire 
to the top switch, so that'll be this one, put it around the terminal in a clockwise manner, crimp it, and tighten it down. And then the black wire which goes to the fan will be on the, the lower switch and tighten it down securely. So let's go over what we found in this switch box. We found that this is a 12-3 with ground, which means there's three conductors, a black, a red, a white, and a bare ground wire. This enabled us to split up the switching for the fan and the light. So it goes this way. Yeah, we want, we want the light on top, the fan on the bottom. So that's what we did. These two were hooked together and a pigtail went to the regular switch uh, in, the, in the original setup. So, so we, we took, we put one of the conductors to the light and one to the fan. And on the other side, we have the hot wire. And it's connected by uh, this connector here to this terminal. So both sides have electrical energy and the ground goes to the ground. So now we hook this up, we're gonna be able to control the light and the fan separately. The next thing that'll do is put a couple wraps of black electrician's tape around the switch for safety. Next, dress the wires, put the switch in the box and tighten it up. Now we'll put on the screwless wall plate. First, put on the backing plate, tighten it down, and then you put on the cover, and it snaps into place. Now I've turned the circuit breaker back on, and the top should be the light, that's correct. Okay, and the bottom one, let's see if it works. We'll turn on the fan, and you see it blowing the feathers. You turn that off, turn that off, turn that on, just, just the fan, just the light. Both of them together, both of them off, works great. So we have succeeded in putting the light and the fan on separate switches. And we didn't have to replace the cable going to the, the fan box. I did an earlier video where this cable coming to the switch box was only a 12-2 with ground. So it did not have sufficient conductors to be able to put the fan and the light on separate switches. This one had the proper cabling going to the switch box, and you will find that sometimes. When you open up your switch box, if your uh, fan and your light are working simultaneously and only, and only on one switch, you will find sometimes that the 12 3 width ground cable is already coming to your switch box. So that's how you put the fan and the light on separate switches. You gotta have the right cable. You have to have some luck. You have to have a little luck involved to, to make this work. Sometimes you just don't have the sufficient correct cable coming to the box to make it work. In that case, you'll need to see uh, another video, which I'll put a link for in my video description, which will show you how to put your light and fan on separate switches and in that case you have to change out the cable to a 12-3 with ground or 14-3 with ground cable. Also I'll put a link for another video that I made which is part of my house renovation series where I was working on a house that was built in 1960. It turned out that the switch box had the original cable coming from the light and it had a newer Romex cable coming from the fan and this gave me the necessary wires to convert the single switch to a double switch. The video is called Separate Switches for Bath Fan and Light from a Single Switch in a 1960s House. So I'll put a link for that video and you might check that out. And now let's meet the stars of the show, all of which you can find links for in my video description. The Fluke 1AC Voltage Detector, Wago lever nuts in the two, three, and five conductor sizes, as well as the variety pack that has all three sizes. Klein ergonomic wire strippers, Klein long nose pliers, 
the Milwaukee three-piece 1,000-volt insulated screwdriver set, which includes the number one ECX driver, which fits the Leviton terminals perfectly. Leviton screwless wall plates, ideal grounding pigtails, the Brone combination bath fan and light, Leviton single pole duplex switch, and the Leviton Decora Plus rocker switch. Thank you. I hope this video was helpful.